Hey guys, and welcome back to the other segment. <laughs> I don't remember what number this is. But last segment we spoke about variables. In this one we're going to talk about functions. Now, just to really, really give you a quick disclaimer, is I know that we haven't started doing anything cool yet. I know that. And I wanted to let you know that we spoke about this at the beginning. We have to cover these, I dare to say, boring fundamentals, basic stuff. And then we'll dive into the really cool stuff. And here's the good news. After the functions video, which you're watching right now, we're going to talk about inputs and then right after inputs uh, we're going to talk about conditionals then after conditionals we're going to build a game and it's going to get fun so this is where you're at you have the functions then we're going to talk about inputs and then conditionals then fun stuff all right so just bear with me you're right here just pay attention we're gonna get to the inputs we're gonna get to the conditionals and then everything we have learned we're gonna build this game okay so let's go pay really good attention guys because uh, i'm gonna give you a quick quiz or I'm going to ask you to do something with what you've learned today with functions right so if we recap with the script or the code as it is just like this a variable that's a string holding the value noob as soon as the game starts we're gonna print the name if I play it That is exactly what happens. New. No. Right. Functions. This is a function right here. This doesn't have to be there. Or that private could have been public to make it public and accessible outside the script. Now, what does the void mean? Well, there are certain functions that can return a number or return something. We call those return functions. And then this function is just a command function that does something versus returning something. So it's void since we're not going to return anything. What you do to create a function is simply add void if it's not going to return anything. Then your function name, let's call it mm, function 1. Then parentheses for the parameter uh, body and then the body of the function itself just like that these parentheses when I say parameter body is that you can actually pass data through this section right here I'm gonna show you how to do that too now if you're gonna create a uh, return function that returns something we wouldn't say void we would say the data type that you want to return so string and then function two and that would be it now do we want to make a public let's make a public public string but you don't really have to make it public you can if you want to if you don't make it public you leave it like that by default these are private if you want to make them public, you add public to it. Now this function here is yelling at me, and that's simply because it's a return function. So I need to return something. So let's say return. And it's a string it needs to return. So I will put a name in here and say Kevin. We're going to return Kevin. In this one, 
when we call that, we're going to take the underscore name up here and set it to this is not noob anymore and with a semicolon. So let's start calling these functions. If I save and go back to Unity and run it, what do you think is going to print out here? The same thing. New. That's exactly what should print out there because we made the functions but keep in mind that when we hit start and the game start this is what's happening so take a good look at what happens here is there anything in here that's telling these to do something if you say no you're absolutely right it simply prints out name which is new if there's nothing in here that tells these to run and these will never run and that's the thing about functions. They have to be called unless they're built in to be called by default. The start is one of those functions that mono develop, mono behavior uses or already has set up to run as soon as the game start. And that's why this one fires off right away. So if you want to fire off this one, we can call it just with the name, the parentheses, and semicolon, just like that. However, it's not printing anything. It's only going to change the name from noob to this is not noob anymore. But we won't see that effect because we're printing the name before we're changing it. So what I want to do is remove that from there. Or actually, I'll leave this there and just do it again. So, if correct, we're going to print the name. It's currently noob. We're going to call the function, which changes it to this is not noob again. Oh, let me see. This is not noob again more. <laughs> I should say anymore. This is not noob anymore. Okay, so we print noob call this function to change it to this is not noob anymore and then print the name again which should at this point say this is not noob anymore let's see if this is correct save it unity will compile and we hit play there so we get noob then we have this is not noob anymore perfect now, how does the return method work? Well, let me show you. Let's remove these. And we're simply going to call the return method the return method as if it was a string because, hey, it technically is. It's not void. It's return in Kevin. So when you call function2 or functional2, it technically is a string and it represents Kevin. And you put it right in there just like it would name. If we save and run, it says Kevin. Why is this necessary? I mean, we could have just said Kevin just like that and did it the way we were doing it before well here's the thing in the way I'm doing it now it's not necessary obviously but let's assume that you wanted to do some calculations like making this into a integer and then returning a number instead Let's say, let's call it total or tot. Now let's just spell it out total. And we will actually create total and total. So it's created right there equals two plus three. 
now we can print that save head back and get eight so see what's happening you have all this space where you can make all kinds of logic do all kinds of fancy calculations and always just return that end in value that sum that person's name that you know highest score whatever it is you do all your calculations and simply call in this each time you call it it goes through do as its calculations and return you exactly what you need now we also spoke about the parameters but we did not do anything with those so let me show you how those work with parameters like I said they go right here and so far we've not been using any let's use one right now I'm gonna make this one a string you simply type the data type and then you give it a name I'm just gonna call mine X and what does that mean now that means I can simply say underscore name equals X so X will be a string so I can print again underscore name which is noob currently then I can call my functional one now it's like that and then I can print underscore uh, underscore name again notice that functional is yelling at me because it's looking for a parameter there's one there so I have to give it one and guess what it's a string so I can actually do this and say this is the new name so what happens is I call the function X will become this is the new name then underscore name will become this is the new name and then when this is printed again this is obviously this is the new name let's save wait for unity to compile and play and it says noob and then this is a new name because we printed noob we call the function we send the parameter to get the name change then we print the name again and the name is already changed so it says the new name awesome all right guys we're at the end of the functions tutorial and uh, segment here so I hope you guys did pay attention because now I'm gonna ask you to do something to see if you actually learned okay so in my start function I just ran my game and in my start function it printed out call in function 1 and in function 1 it's call in function 2 in function 2 it's call in function 3 and then in function 3 it says you did it so I've made three functions and I'm just giving you a sneak peek of what I did so my start button I printed out I'm calling function 1 and I call function 1 and this function 2 I printed out calling function 2 and I call function 2 and I made two other functions functions 2 and 3 let's see if you can do it so you can have this same printout just like I did all right have fun making it and definitely post back with your results and good luck Hey, you should become a part of this positive and educational channel by hitting that subscribe button. Again, thank you for watching. Have a great day.